Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, like my introduction said, my name is uh, Dr. Tom Taylor Clark, and um, I want to tell you a story about how squirrels and chili and birds taught us something about pain. But first, let's start off with something really simple. How many senses do humans have? Anyone want to say? Okay, there. How many senses do we have? Zero. I'm sorry? Five. Five. Good. Um, that's what we teach our children, and that's all well and good. But of course, what we teach our children is rarely the whole truth. And so actually, scientists have uh, worked out that humans have many more senses than just five. We're all familiar with uh, sight and hearing, taste, touch, and smell. However, you all have other senses. Uh, an example of a sense that is not described by those five senses is a sense of balance or a sense of temperature. You know when something is cold or it's warm. This is another sense. A great sense, and an example that we can all do now, if we all do an experiment, is something, a sense called proprioception. And this allows us to know where our joints are. Now, this is a test that maybe some of the adults in the uh, audience have uh, done before, where you close your eye, and with your hand out, you can touch the tip of your nose. Now, how can you do that if you can't see? your finger. Well, you can do that because you sense through senses in your joints and your muscles and your skin where your bones are and therefore you can direct your limbs in the correct direction. This is obviously critically important for running or catching or spearing a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex back in the day. So, we have all these new senses. I want to talk to you about a sense of pain, a sense of damage. We're all familiar when we do something wrong to our body. We stub our toe or we touch a hot stove. And what does it feel like? It feels painful. Well, the reason why it feels painful is because we have sensors in our skin and throughout our body, in fact, which detect noxious damage. So how does this work? Well, there's a nice little picture that I cobbled together in about 20 seconds, which kind of describes the general um, neuroscience behind sensing. Now, this could be any type of sensor, but in general, it's simple. You have a sensor in a part of your body, and then that sensor is linked by a nerve all the way into your brain. So, for example, you have a sensor in your hand for touch. When I poke my hand, that sensor senses that mechanical effort and then transmits the information into the brain. Now, we would like to know how these work. We'd like to know because we want to know how the human body works, but particularly for pain, because pain is a very useful sensation. It teaches us what is good and is bad for our body. However, pain can be really debilitating as well. If you have an acute pain, like say if you're a four-year-old and you're tottering around your mum's kitchen and you touch the hot stove and it hurts, you learn never to do that again. This is useful. But what happens if you have chronic pain, if you're constantly in pain? For example, uh, older people often get something called arthritis, which is inflammation in your joints. And, you can't, and it's so painful that you cannot use your hands. So this is a chronic pain, which is stopping you from living your life. So we want to learn how these processes work so that then we can potentially create therapies to treat these pain and alleviate these symptoms and this dysfunction. Okay, so a long time ago, about in the last 80 years or so, it's been very clear that there's one chemical that we can find in our environment that consistently evokes pain. And this is from the chili plant. Now, you guys are probably familiar with eating chili. And sometimes, if you're like me, even a little bit of chili is painful in the mouth. Okay. Now, if you've ever chopped chili on your kitchen chopper, and you've got a little cut on your hand, and the chili gets into the cut, it really hurts. Now, scientists have worked out how the body senses this chili. And this is a little bit of scientific jargon for you guys. It senses chili with something called the V1 receptor. Now, the V1 receptor, or the V1 sensor, is upon the sensory nerves in your skin, on your tongue, throughout your body. Now, why does chili cause pain? 
It doesn't actually do any damage to your skin. It just, you just feel like it's doing damage. So it's mimicking damage. But what else does chili feel like when you eat it? What does it feel like when you eat a lot of chili in your mouth? Yes. It feels spicy. It feels hot, doesn't it? Now, why is that? Well, the reason why chili feels hot is because the V1 sensor not only detects chili, it also detects heat. So your body can't tell the difference between a chemical, which is found in chili, and actual heat. And so when the four-year-old puts her hand on the stove and goes, ah, this is painful, because it's hot, it's activating the V1 sensor. And in fact, we can create drugs which block the V1 sensor, and you stop the sensation of both chili and of heat. So why is chili painful? Well, it turns out that there's another thing which is painful, and that's inflammation. Here's a picture of a rather unfortunate individual with a sunburn. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but when I get a sunburn, it feels really painful, really sensitive to the touch. A little touch like this would be, ah, oh, agony if you've got a sunburn. And it turns out that the chemicals produced by inflammation, like this sunburn in the skin, look very much like the chemical which is in chili, which causes pain. So what the chili plant has done is produced a chemical through evolution which mimics and looks like what is produced in the skin when it's damaged. Okay, so this tells us that if we know how chili works, we can know how pain is produced by inflammation like arthritis and other diseases like that. So, scientists decided to find out how chili worked. And the question to start off with is, why would chili make something which is painful to eat? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Fruit, and this is a fruit, chili is a fruit, it's got, it's got some fleshy stuff and some seeds. And you know why plants produce fruit. It's to disperse their seeds, get animals to eat, and then disperse their seeds. So why would chili plant produce something which is ah, really painful to eat? Although the joke's on the chili plants, because humans like to eat chili, but that's another matter. So the reason is because of these cute guys. OK, so we've got some monkeys, we've got some squirrels, any mammal that eats a chili plant will destroy the seeds inside its digestive tract. There are different enzymes in your body which, when it's breaking down your food, makes the seeds unable to then germinate when they pass through the animal into the stool. OK, so chili has adapted to prevent mammals from eating it. So what else eats it? Birds eat chili, and when, when birds eat a chili uh, fruit and the seeds pass through the bird, they do not get broken down. The seeds can then germinate properly. So the chili plant has a decision to make. It, do I get eaten by a mammal or do I get eaten by a bird? If I get eaten by an animal, my seeds will not work. If I get eaten by a bird, my seeds will work. So we want to in, the, uh, the plant wishes to encourage the animals not to eat it, and the birds to eat it. And it turns out that mammals, like I said, uh, respond negatively to chili. It's painful, but birds don't care. They're just eating tons of chili. Yeah, the most chili we can eat, doesn't matter. Birds don't seem to care. So what does this mean? Does this mean that birds do not have the V1 sensor? Well, it turns out the birds do have the V1 sensor. Birds respond to heat in, an, uh, uh, in a defensive way. If you if you put a, a bird near a hot flame, it retreats because it's hot and it's got that V1 sensor. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that the birds do have the V1 sensor, but the V1 sensor does not get activated by chili. OK? And this is where the scientists got together and worked out that this rather esoteric point that you put chili in bird feed so that the mammals don't eat it and let the birds eat it, this can help us understand pain. Why does it help us understand pain? Because if we can compare the V1 sensor from mammals with the V1 sensor from birds, we can work out where the chili works. So 
You guys know about DNA. DNA is the genetic code. It uh, allows us to know exactly the building blocks for all biological life. And what we can do is the biological scientists got together and they worked out the genetic code of all the mammals and all the birds. And what they compared was they wanted to look at the genetic code which made the V1 sensor, okay? So we can look at the two different structures. Now, the V1 sensor has 900 separate components. This thing is complex. It's complicated. So you'd never work out where the, uh, the chili uh, uh, activated the V1 sensor if you were just to change each and every one. So instead, they compared the mammalian sensor with the bird sensor. And you see there's a tiny bit which is different, don't you? The little yellow boxes. And those yellow boxes, that was the only difference between the bird and the mammal. So this must mean that that's where the chili works. The chili works on that little yellow box. Or it doesn't work on that yellow box because that's the bird version. So if we now know where the chili works, I want to remind you that chili mimics what the body produces when it's damaged. So now we know from this experiment where the little bits of your own body in inflammation, where that attacks the V1 sensor. So now we can design some drugs which target that tiny little sensor. That tiny bit in this huge sensor we can now block with drugs, therefore treating pain. And I just want to end up by saying this is about new perspectives, okay? And the new perspectives is that if we can use different scientists, these are neuroscientists, these are molecular biologists, these are zoologists and botanists, everyone join together so that now we have a target for treating pain. And I think in the near future, we're going to have drugs which can help people with all their pain syndromes. So I'd like to thank everyone for their attention and have a great day.